So thank you very much to everybody who's attending the follow-up, the question and this is a question and answer session to our local agency, Federal Highway Administration Title VI presentation that we gave a couple of weeks ago. This is our second part. And thank you everybody for all the comments and feedback. And what we really noticed was, hey, we didn't have enough time to answer all of the questions and answers that everybody had submitted. So we're going to be addressing those today. So in part with the last presentation, you know, we wanna make sure that anybody with a vision disability is able to see the pictures on the screen, which aren't easily visible through a reader. So I'm just gonna go ahead and describe the pictures here that are up on the screen, which on the left is a picture of the Capitol, a nice, beautiful, sunny day, which is pretty close to the same thing that we're experiencing here in Sacramento, be it a bit colder than the picture there up on the screen. And the bottom right hand corner is a picture of the Title VI program and the areas or characteristics of discrimination that the Title VI program is intended to prohibit. Now, one of the things we really didn't talk about, but is a huge buzzword and a, a huge issue at hand these days is the term of equity. The Title VI program really does provide levels of equity and, and raises these characteristics of discrimination and puts them up onto a, a level playing field and really eliminates those areas and incorporates everybody's, it, it tries to promote everybody's participation into transportation decisions. Within the picture, it shows race, color, low income, disability, limited English proficiency, sex, age, and national origin as the intent of Title VI program wants to give equal access opportunity regardless of those characteristics. And again, our host here is Kathy Lee. She'll be performing the next few slides here. After, excuse me, the, she'll be starting on the third slide. And Kathy, can you move us to the next slide, please? Excellent, thank you, Kathy. And again, here's our contact information in case you still have further questions that we can't answer today. Uh, we have Kathy Lee, Civil Rights Coordinator, Annette Goudeau, joining us also as a Civil Rights Analyst, and myself, Daniel Burke, the Civil Rights Manager. And our mission within the branch we work in, which is the Program Reviews and Outreach Branch, is to provide training and guidance to improve stakeholder processes. So again, we value your participation. We hope that we're able to provide the training and guidance necessary to improve compliance as a whole for the state of California to comply with Title VI provisions. And our vision is to strengthen partnerships and civil rights through excellent customer service and user-friendly communication. So we hope that the presentation today and the presentation a couple of weeks ago were easy to understand and you know, we hope we're as friendly as possible to answer all of your questions. I'm gonna go ahead and turn things over to Kathy. Go ahead, Kathy. All right. Thank you, Daniel, and good afternoon, everyone. Thank you to all who submitted the previous Title VI webinar survey, as this will assist us in improving the upcoming training. As Daniel mentioned earlier, as additional follow-up part two, we want to address the Q&A since we did not get an opportunity to respond to all the questions and comments during the webinar. The Title VI presentation that you see here today has been revised from the original Title VI training to tailor the bulk of the Q&A related to Title VI insurances in contract document and agreement and a Title VI complaint process. I plan to spend about five or 10 minutes presenting on each of these topics. Thereafter, we will address the remaining of the Q&A after the presentation. And we will go ahead and open up the floor for Q&A, okay? So uh, looking at slide number three, uh, slide number three, we have Title VI insurances in contract document and agreement. As we mentioned in our previous webinar, the FHWA Form 1273 is required to be included in all Federal Highway Administration, which is FHWA construction contract and subcontract of 10,000 more. It allows enforcement of Title VI and other non-discrimination requirement. So with the FHWA 1273 form, the Federal Highway Administration started the process for revising the form back in 
2016. So as of now, I'm not aware of when they expect to see the revised form. But once we get that notification, we definitely go ahead and relay that message down to our local agency. But as of now, it is in the progress of uh, being updated. The form uh, FHWA form 1273 is in the process of being updated. Okay. Now, uh, with that in mind, um, FHWA do request all agency as well as state agency um, to uh, to uh, physically incorporate the form in all federal highway construction contract, not consultant contract. Okay, I want to make that clear. Now, the form FHWA 1273 is only from construction contract. So, if you have a federal highway uh, consult contract, you do not need to insert this form. This form only applies to federal highway construction contract. Okay. Now the form outlined the requirement of construction personnel in relation to equal employment opportunity requirement of the contract. The form is also not permitted to modify the provision. Okay. So you cannot modify the form on 1273. However, if a local agency or a state agency want to develop a separate supplement document or a special provision such as a, a con, as long as the content doesn't conflict with the require, a federal requirement or change the intent of the provision of FHWA 1273 form, then you can go ahead and do so. So what that means is that, for example, here at Caltrain Division Local Assistant, we develop a form called Exhibit 12G require federal A contract linkage form for local assistant construction project to include the FHWA 1273 language. So what we did with that form, we just copy and paste um, the FHWA form 1273, we copy that language and copy and put it into our exhibit 12G form. So that's our special provision or what we call a separate supplemental document. So if you, the local agency have something similar to that, uh, you can be more than happy to use that as well. Or you can use what Caltrain have, which is exhibit 12G. Um, you can use that, you can use that uh, exhibit form. Okay, that exhibit form do include the FHWA form 1273 language in that, okay? So I just wanna go ahead and give you guys a heads up regarding that. Now the master agreement, which is the exhibit 4C, which is the mall, now the local agency, once they sign this assurances as part of the master agreement, they agree to confirm to all Caltrain local assistant procedure manual, as well as the local assistant program guidance. Okay. Now the master agreement is required when a local agency, whenever the federal or state funds are being used on a local funded project. Okay. That's the only time when a master agreement will, will be in place when a local agency, anytime where they have a federal or state funds are required to be used on a local, on a local funded project, okay? As I mentioned earlier in the master agreement, a, you know, as local agency agreed to comply with the um, Caltrain guidance, they also need, a also need to comply with the federal laws as well, okay? So signing the master agreement, not only the, do they have to agree to the state uh, state regulation as well as policies, they also agree for the federal regulation as well as their laws as well, okay? Now, the master agreement only need to be signed once, okay? I wanna go repeat that again. The master agreement, which is the exhibit 4C, only need to be signed once when an agency enter into agreement with Caltrain to administrate federal highway funds. Okay, now right below that is Exhibit 4D Program Supplement Agreement, which is a PSA. Each project including the local agency reaffirmation of the non-discrimination assurances contained in the master agreement. So what that means is that the Program Supplement Agreement, this is a supplement to the master agreement. So what, what that does is that it formalizes a financial responsibility and provision for any Pacific federal A or state funded project, okay? In the program supplement agreement, it also have special clauses in agreement to define the agency Pacific responsibility in implementing and maintaining the project, okay? Another thing to also keep in mind with the program supplement agreement is that no reimbursement payment can be made until the program supplement agreement has been fully executed. Okay, that invoice must not be submitted prior to this execution. 
All right. So as we move forward to slide number four, slide number four, read as changes in Title VI required insurances. Okay, the first one you see is a Department of Transportation U.S. order. Okay, it is required to attach Appendix E in every federal A contract and agreement. Okay, now with that Appendix E, um, as we mentioned earlier in the Exhibit 4C in our master agreement, we, Caltrans we did not have the Appendix E into our uh, master agreement. This is why this the change in the Title VI required insurance is required now, because we didn't have that. Okay. Now, the second bullet point you see is Appendix A to E of the Title VI insurances. Now, that is just a copy of the appendixes, okay? The first one, which is a DOT order, that is just an order from U.S. Department of Transportation. The second bullet point is just an example of what Appendix E of the Title VI insurances look like, okay? Now, with Appendix A to E of the Title VI insurances, all local agency must include the provision indicated in these appendixes. Okay, in all federal A contract between an agency and a contractor. Um, again, like I mentioned earlier, the current master agreement include the appendix A to D as in dog of the Title VI assurances, but it does not include the appendix E. This is why it is very important to include the appendix E in all your contract. Okay, so what I can do is go ahead and show you an example um, now that we have a little bit more time. So what I'm going to do and click on, I'll go ahead and show you what, how a master agreement currently look like. So I'm going to click on the local assistant procedure manual, which is chapter nine. All right. So as you see right here on title six contract and document agreement. So if you click on this master agreement. Okay. And then do you see the master agreement up? Yes, I do. Okay. So the master agreement, if you go to page 19, okay. So page 19 is where the appendix e start, uh, A starts. So this is A, right? Then you scroll down, there's B, appendix B of the Title VI insurances, and there's C, and there's D. So only thing that's missing is E, okay? So we don't, we're also be in the process to, Hopefully maybe next year or the following year, we do plan to go ahead and update that to include Appendix E. But I wanna at least show you all uh, to look where the Appendix A to E to look for. So these are the appendixes in currently in the master agreement. Okay. So yeah, so back to the uh, LAPM chapter nine, title six. So that is where you'll look for the master agreement, which is the 4D. So the Appendix A to D is located to the very end of the master agreement. The only thing that was missing is Appendix E. So that's why it's very important if, when you have the master agreement, if you don't have the Appendix E, you wanna go ahead and attach the Appendix E into your contract, okay? Now the Exhibit 4, 4C of the master agreement, uh, again, like I mentioned earlier, we do plan to update the borrow language in the next update, hopefully maybe next year or the following year. We do plan to update that to include the Appendix E. Okay, as of now, the changes to the Title VI assurances have included in Exhibit 4D, which is the program supplement agreement. So la sometime last year, we did update the Exhibit 4D, which is a program supplement agreement. So as of now, we're currently waiting for those updates to be implemented into the Exhibit, exhibit 4D. Okay, the Exhibit 4D is the, is the program supplement agreement that I mentioned earlier. So we did include the uh, exhibit uh, appendix E of the Title VI insurances in those languages as well, okay? Now we also have the FAQs, which is the appendix E of the Title VI insurances. Couch and Division of Local Assistance has developed that um, to provide additional detail relating to the announcement, okay? Now, a couple of those announcements, I wanna just kind of uh, go, go over briefly. I'm not gonna click on the FAQs, uh, but I will go over a couple of things on the FAQ that some, some folks may have some questions on that, okay? So if a contract is already executed, it could be amended in, but it's not necessary. So what we mean by that, is if the contract already been executed, we'll leave it to the, up to the local agency if they wanna make any mod modification to it. They don't have to do it, unless they want to, okay? It is not necessary, okay? Because we did not make this notification until last year of September, 2020. 
So if you have a contract, that's where the executed rate, don't worry about it. If you want to modify, you, you definitely can to include Appendix E, but it's not necessary. Okay. Now, if the if the agency wants to amend an advertisement to include Appendix A to E, they may do so. However, again, it is not required as we did not provide this direction prior to announcement. And prior to the announcement is September 17, 2020. As you can see on the FAQ right below, right below that, there's a language that affected, affected September 17, 2020. So we did not provide these announcements until then. So if you have an advertisement or even a contract that had been executed before that, then you don't need to, if you want to make modification to your contract, you can definitely can, but it's, it's not necessary, okay? Now the appendix E need to be attached in all consultant and construction contract if a project would be federalized, okay? Now to find out more information on the FAQ, what I just went over, you can click on the hyperlink on the FAQ. It's gonna bring you directly to the FAQ. So that would go ahead and, and explain a little bit more about what I just went over, okay? So just, just, just a takeaway. Now, if you have a contract, again, already executed, if you want to uh, make changes to it, you can definitely can, but it's not necessary, okay? And the same goes for if you have if you have an uh, advertisement that's up already that have been executed or been, been advertised, if you want to make changes to that to include Appendix E, you can definitely do that, but it's not necessary, okay? Um, these changes, again, was affected September 17, 2020. And I do have questions where uh, local agencies say, hey, Kathy, I didn't receive this notification until you know, early this year. So what, what do I do now? Do I have to go back to my the previous executed contract to change all this? Um, again, we leave that up to, up to the agency. If you want to go in and modify that, you definitely can, but be sure to do document everything. I know that there's no vacation was sent out September 17, 2020. If you just now hear about the, uh, the Appendix E, Title VI insurances to include that in all your contract, then you want to make sure you made a note in your contract saying, you know, the notification was sent out on September 17, 2020. However, the local agency, we, the agency did not receive, did not get the update or the notification until early this year. So you just want to make sure you document, document that. Um, I, I get those questions often that, you know, we, we, we didn't get the, the notification regarding the, the changes. So what do we do now? Do we go back? Do we just, you know, again, we leave that up to the agency, what you guys want to do. Um, but again, if you don't need to modify that, I wouldn't, you know, I would not recommend for you to go back to all your contract uh, before September 17, 2020, or even now, um, I wouldn't recommend to do that. But if you want to, you definitely can. Um, just make sure you do document that, um, that, that you receive this notification as of today, whatever the case may be. But we do encourage you to still moving forward to attack, uh, attach the Appendix E in all your contract. Okay. Now the Title VI, again, I, I know we mentioned this before, the Title VI insurance announcement was made in three different ways. We sent a Caltrans Division Local System blog. We also updated our Caltrans Division Local System website, and we also notified the Caltrans district, district Office. So if, you in, if you're in the contact with the district, district office often, uh, he or she may be able to also um, communicate those announcements to you as well. So anytime when we have these changes like that, those are the, those are the channel that we go through. We go to Caltrans Division Local Assistant, we post it on our Division Local Assistant website, as well as our Caltrans uh, district office. So we also notify them as well. And through this training, we also notify through our local public agency training. So any, any update regarding those, we make sure we make those announcements. So that way, um, everybody's aware of um, the changes coming from the Department of Transportation, okay? So as I mentioned on the previous slide related to the Exhibit 12G form, now that this form do not contained or replaced Appendix E, A to E, only FHWA 1271 language. So what that means is that Appendix A to E still need to be attached in the Federal A consultant and construction contract, okay? So we do get questions about that as well, that if we have the FHWA 1273 form in our contract, can we not, do we still have to attach that with our Exhibit 4C, um, 4G? Or the vice versa, if we have exhibit 4G, 
do we still need to attach the appendix A to E? And the, the question is yes. Appendix E, A to E, is different compa compared to what the federal, the FHWA 1273 is, okay? This form, again, do not contain or replace appendix A to E, okay? So appendix A to E still need to be attached to all federal A consultant and construction contract, okay? The exhibit 4G, must incorporate into all local, local assistant federal aid construction contract, where the appendix A to E applies to all contract, rather is a construction or consultant contract. So the exhibit 4G applies to only construction contract, okay? So I wanna make sure we do get a lot of questions on related to the exhibit 4G, as well as appendix A to E, as well as the FHWA 1273 form, okay? So all three forms must be included in all your contract, like minus the um, 1273, because the 1273 is only for construction contract, as well as the 12G, okay? So we do plan to, we also update our Q&A as well. So we do plan to revise the Exhibit 4G as a one-stop shop for all federal A con contract requirement, including Appendix A to E. So we do have we do have that in our works where we plan to update most of our exhibit 12G uh, master agreement as well a program supplement agreement. We do have that in the works. Uh, hopefully in the next year or so, we do plan to update all that contract or agreement so that way it will reflect these changes that you see now, which is the changes in the Title VI required insurances. Okay. Now the FHWA, um, you know, we also get this often as well. The FHW Form 1273, it does not replace the required language from the Department of Transportation 1052A or either, okay? So what that means is that the FHWA 1273 form shall be included in all required provision, including Title VI provision by the DOT order, but the Title VI language in Section 11, which is the FHWA 1273 form is very general. Okay, so this is why we encourage all local agency to attach the appendix A to E in all their contract, whether it is construction or consultant contract. Okay, now one thing to note is that the FHWA form 1273 only applies to federal A construction contract, not any other federal contract such as the A&E, which is consultant contract. Okay, so this is something very important to keep in mind that, you know, I know we mentioned this before that the form 1273 is only for your construction contract. Appendix A to E applies to all contracts, regardless if it's construction or consultant contract. Okay. <clears throat> 